welcome. Happy New Year. Welcome to the War Report. This is a show where we talk about NXT and AEW. I am your host, Cyrus, joined by Quan of the Comeback Spot. How are we feeling today? Let's get straight to it. Oh, my mama. We <laughs> we <lit. laughs> Um, Yeah, shit. I guess we can get... Uh, Let's just get straight into the trenches and we can just talk about, uh, you know, the miscellaneous shit uh, going with with the people uh, going into AEW Uh, on TBS. Oh, my God. Um, Yo, you know what, though? Um, It it took me like five minutes. I was like, yo, why isn't uh, uh, Dynamite on? I was sitting there for like he was on the wrong channel. Yeah, yeah. I was on TNT. I'm like, what? I don't understand what's going on. You know, they've been hammering over and over and over for the past like three weeks. But it's coming to TBS. I still went to TNT like a dummy. But yeah. Um, I illegally watch AEW, so therefore, uh, I'm always mm. on the right channel. <laughs> mm. I do not. I do not support. Um, but now nah, let, uh, let's get into it. Um, a lot of NXT news, which is very rare. Um, even more than just releases. So, um, do you have a list of all the producers that um? That got released. I know William Regal got released, which is very sad to me. Um, yeah, I have everybody. So it was. Um, let's see. It's Ryan Katz, Road Dog, Dave Kapoor, and I believe Brad Armstrong, which I didn't even know he was over there, but I guess he's over there too. Thatcher and Danny Birch, who I'm assuming uh, are no longer. Hideki Suzuki. Yeah, Hachiman. So I'm assuming those three guys were probably considered producers or backstage talent at this point. None of them were on. Well, Hideki was on TV, but never any kind of physical capacity. So there were no wrestlers released this week. This week uh, to, today, but um, so if let's say. They only released Thatcher and uh, Hideki Suzuki Hachiman because they were just like, maybe we want to like rearrange your contract of some sort, you know? Like maybe like Thatcher was still getting a wrestler's check when he should be getting a coach check. Mm-hmm. That would be, you know, the ideal situation in my mind where they're just like, like this is not a release. This is just like we're gonna rearrange the contracts. I don't think this was happening here. I think that would would, <laughs> that would make me very happy. Danny Birch, motherfucker, I forgot you was here. So it is what it is. Um, yeah. but if not, with this current iteration, I think Thatcher could really do something in two point. Because when he started great. working with that, uh, when he started working with Champa, we was getting some cool shit from him. Yeah. You know, we were getting a lot of character stuff from him. So. Uh, it sucks. That absolutely sucks. I definitely think Thatcher is definitely one of those dudes that could have made the transition um, into what 2.0 is while the others flop. Um, yeah. Hachima, I mean, it was I cool. know I was there. It, it, <laughs> I don't it know was, why he was there. It was cool to have him on screen. I don't know why he was on screen, though. Yeah. He and then he literally, I don't think he did anything. I don't think he interfered in a match. No, he, he was like legitimate just watching. <laughs> like, I don't even think he actually said stuff like to, you know, be like uh like an R. Anderson when you know when he like starts screaming at Cody and shit. Like yeah. he doesn't do that. And then there's often times where Diamond Mine are just out there without him. And then yeah. you know, things just go as normal. So um I like him a lot, and it's a shame, but he, I feel like it was kind of just wasting his time. Unless, you know, he was, like, really just working with, like, some, you know, just working for a little bit. Um, and plus, we don't yeah, really so, even know the, we don't even know the deal, uh, the, in, uh, what is it? the terms of that deal. He probably could have been just, like, you know, temp coach or some shit. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, just... All those names, they all came out, but the biggest name was uh, William Regal, who mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be honest here. This one was surprising. I thought at this point William Regal is a lifer. William Regal has been signed to WWE for the most part since like 2000, mm-hmm. and 
he's just been uh, such an integral part of NXT since the, since the start, literally from day one, he was there. And, you know, he's also, you know, head scout, you know, if you ever see pictures of him lurking at PWG shows back in the day or mm-hmm. MLW or whatever, you see him in the background with some UK shows, he was all over the world, just scouting talent. So it's, it's, you can tell like that was a Triple H's guy. Obviously, Rodon getting let go. That's Triple H's guy. It's really interesting. I'm, I'm really starting to get a little concerned. Is Triple H a part of this anymore? Is this a Shawn Michaels project at this point? Like, what's going on with that? Um, I'll say, but you know, uh, I'll, I'll answer both two things here. Um, William Regal getting fired is definitely something that I'm like really like, you know. Is that about because I love William Regal? I love, you know, everything he's done for NXT. But I think that now NXT is scouting in a very different way now. And they're scouting for a very different type of, you know, sort of talent. So yeah, you, don't, you don't think Regal can't find that kind of talent? Well, like Regal, like you said, like Regal was all over the world, you know, watching at P or you know, at PWG or like at these indie shows or whatever. There's not really a lot of that any, you know, there's not a lot of indie shows like that anymore, especially in the States. But like, was they gonna have William Regal sitting at a college football game? <laughs> like, they might have. I don't know. He, is that like? But is that what he wanted to do? <laughs> I don't. Even, like, that's the question. Does he? Did he want to do that? Um, it's just like, hey, yo, Regal. Here's uh, here's two tickets to the Orange Bowl, bro. <laughs> Let me know what you see the, out there. Check the, check the linebacker out. you be like, what the hell, is the linebacker? Because he doesn't watch football. Oh, he might watch football. <laughs> Regal might watch football. He's been in America long um, enough. Well, I just think, you know, the way that they're getting their talent now is going to be very different, especially with the uh, the NIL uh, program. Yeah. So, well, this... just be I'm just being realistic about it. Yeah, um, I am it's, sad it's... about it. Um, the I, road dog I just think Regal. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, the I don't give a fuck about real dog. He can go. At, after, the, after the report about the uh, Black Lives Matter thing, like two years ago, I was good on road dog as well, it was. I'm kind of already good on Road Dog because I actually don't know what he does. Really. Yeah, I think he's like one of like the head producers types. I think he was like like what Kevin Dunn is on the mm-hmm. main roster. I think that's kind of what Road Dog was for NXT or something close to it. My so my vision or what I understand just from what I see, I am not you know super backstage guy. I really do not care for that. So like uh, it doesn't make it doesn't really affect the product to me uh for me but like it's matt bloom triple h Shawn michaels william regal like uh you remember when i believe uh when they vacated the title or they did something on nxt and then they just like had them like those four in a conference room and shit um i was just like oh uh yeah, so you guys are the ones that are running it. See, and then I was just like, "That's what it is in my mind." What uh, what it's portrayed on TV, but um, as far as is this a Triple H project? Um, I don't know, man. I feel like he might still be a part of it, but he is not as hands on as he used to be. And I'm be real with you. Maybe for the best, dog. Uh, I. I, I... I, I got. I gotta say, Amen. NXT hasn't I gotta, I, to, me, to, to me. NXT hasn't missed in, the, in a long time since the 2.0. It's been mostly hits uh, you know, over you the misses. Know I mean, may you know, we saw what Triple H vision for NXT was, bruh. And a lot of them niggas didn't cut the mustard, nor did they even want to try. So, um, I can like, I don't see you know. Paul necessarily uh, or Triple H necessarily being fired, but I definitely think that NXT is definitely going to be different this time around, or like how they manage things is going to be very different. Dog, keep saying this, this reminds me of a uh, dust, dusty era of NXT. This is I'm what it is. Well, I'm telling you, bro, we need the WWE 365 on the Vince visit. I need it. It's. It's, 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 it's like one of those things that I'm like, you know, I'll fund it myself. Fuck it. <laughs> I know. I know y'all was recording Vince being like, hey, bro, I'm breaking. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, they record on, man. 
well, I'm fucking with you. And then him looking at uh goddamn Bronson Reed being like, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> you need to leave. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's just like a lot of changes that are coming to NXT. Uh, you know, we thought it would just be on the screen, but it's like everything getting it, changed it, down there. It's all, it's all around, and yeah. Hey man, I'm liking what I'm seeing, so therefore I. I don't know if this is necessarily a bad thing. I don't think it's, I, it's a bad thing. People lost jobs, but I don't for the product itself. It, it I don't think it's going to make any difference to me. It's if, just unfortunate people are losing jobs. Yeah, but if the product is going to be better, which is you know what I kind of care about since I'm a consumer, um, I watch NXT 2.0. I don't watch backstage. So very true. That's just how I feel about this, uh, the situation at hand. Um, yeah, man, it, it definitely sucks. I'm I definitely going to miss Regal. I definitely think he actually still could have played a, a, like, a large part. Um, they could have found something for Regal to do. Yeah. Uh, they could have kept and, him authority. I don't know why they just stopped using him as an authority figure. I, don't, I still don't understand that. I thought, uh, shit, I think it's fine. <laughs> Even I mean, though, it doesn't like even though he was, you know, he did he didn't like really interfere or any like thing like that. He was he was used as you know one of the best authority figures. Um, I I'd say maybe they could have used him over at UK, but that that would just be like we're just giving you something to do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's like here and settled in America at this point too. I don't know if he like. Mm-hmm. I don't think he like all, all, all his all I mean, his like, lizard cages are here, bro. They like it over here. So I know I know his, I know his son's over there, but I don't think he's gonna. His son a grown ass man. He go with his own man. He ain't need gotta I'm look after him. I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but I just thought um I thought Regal was like the uh the Gerald Briscoe Pat Patterson type of person who just oh like, just like forever for they, life. Yeah, they did. We'll find something for you to do. <laughs> Um, I'm sure. I'm sure. I would. I would hope this this ended amicably and on good terms. And I'm sure oh, he'll be yeah. a hall. Of, he'll be in Hall of Fame next year, probably. Or if they ever do a UK show, they'll put him in the Hall of Fame over, or something. They'll figure it out. Yeah, that should be fine. Uh, it's gonna be. Hey man, I'm not worried about these things. Um, now we can get into what kind of took over the weekend, and mm-hmm. I would like to preface it. Um, me and Quan talked a lot about it on on our patreon segment so what i did was i cut it out (laughs) and i'm gonna place it uh just like in the middle of this audio track hopefully it sounds seamless but um so just uh a lot of preface going on here uh because we didn't do that in a patreon segment but um big swole parted ways with aew and when we initially heard the news, we were just like, this is going to be the start of a lot more. Because she was like, you know, uh, one of the first people that kind of, you know, that was there and they never really used. And I can see a lot more people just not uh, being re-signed. Um, when we initially reported it, you know, they released a statement where they were just like, you know, we ended it on you know mutual terms and like we said this is really just to save face (laughs) because they didn't want to be like we're gonna release like we're releasing big swole because you know they don't want to be like the other billion dollar company we we have to get these brownie points um then turns out yeah it was cap it was it, it, it was not uh it did not end uh on good as his terms as they tried to make it seem on Twitter. <laughs> um, Big Swole. Uh, I don't know. It, they, uh, it wasn't a podcast. It was, like a, it was like a radio show called in type of deal. Yeah. I, uh, I didn't even know people still did those. So um, I don't even know what the website was called. But uh, shout out to friend of the show, friend of the network, Petty Tree, kind of giving all the spark notes and all the quotes uh, of it. uh, And then we get the quotes about diversity, representation, and the structure within uh, AEW backstage. It is not uh, 
it is uh, not all uh, fun and roses or whatever the hell they, uh, sun, sunshine and roses back there. And a Fightful, you know, they caught wind of it and they cited it. And then Tony Khan reacted to the headline that uh, Fightful uh, gave saying that more or less AEW um, kind of has like a representation diversity uh, structuring issue. And then this, it brings us to, I think, one of the most psychotic tweets I think Yo, he's you know what? Ever, you know what? ever put together. I- I'm ready to talk about it. Top 10 wrestling tweet of all time. It's up there with... Uh, Jesus Christ. Work, 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 it's up there. It's up there. Work yourself into a shoot. It's up there. It's, it's, it's one of those. Uh, I, need, uh, I need a hug, brother. HH. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, Tony Khan says, the top two execs are Brown, uh, me and Megan, uh, with two exclamation points. I think that always kills me. Uh, Jade Bowen's caster, uh, Dante Martin, Nyla Rose, Isaiah, and Mark Quinn, all won on TV this month. The TBS, t- uh, the TV, the TBS title tournament was very diverse. I let Swer- uh, I let Swole's contract expire as I felt her wrestling was not good enough, period. Hashtag AEW Rampage Street Fight tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> what time was that tweet sent out? Oh, oh I'm sorry, I, I cut I cut out the time, it. but it oh. was that shit was like it, had, it was like, like at it was 7 like, p.m. like an hour before the show went up. My, mind you, New Year's Eve. This is New Year's Eve, so yes, <laughs> I could imagine. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what happened right now, right? It was at the AEW. Uh, um, New Year's Eve party. Tony nah, was already it, a couple, Tony was already a couple of drinks in. Might he might have uh, you know, done something else. I don't know. Whatever he's into, whatever his vices are. <laughs> and then someone pointed out, hey, Tony, you saw what Fightful said. So Tony saw that. He was like, oh, word. <laughs> and you you feel a little loose. It was at uh, seven eighteen p.m. <laughs> yeah, he was already yeah he, he, he was already getting the drinks in. He had, mm-hmm. he had a successful year. He was feeling good. And then someone showed him the tweet and he was like, oh, where? Didn't even read the article. Not one excerpt. He said, oh, I'm about to respond right now. I'm about to let them know. <laughs> I'm about to react. <laughs> I'm about to react. <laughs> um, I think now this is where I will cut into our Patreon thoughts on the whole thing. And then uh, we'll come back right after that. But I mean, I would you, say, you have already heard it if you if you listen to this. Yeah, uh, if you listen to the A show, they definitely have a really great discussion on it. Personally, right now, that fire and that's like the you know the emotions that I have for it is not there anymore. Yeah, I'm happy we have time to just like sit back and reflect. Plus, a lot of a lot of stuff has changed since then. Mm-hmm. Tony Khan still has, as of right now, Tony Khan still has not apologized for what he said. Well, is, I don't think a, 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 a apology think not gonna set me right. <laughs> I'm yeah. Even even if Big Swole, you know, goes, I accept your apology. That's not good for me. Because yeah. the reason the uh, the reason why I don't really feel this vitriol, or you know, I'm not really fired up about it or anything like that. And then you know, if you're a patron, we're talking in the past, which is gonna make this really funny. But um, yeah. when we talk about it, there's not going to be that Cyrus that's, you know, ready to put AEW head in the fire because we've been saying this for so long. And as long as I've been here, I've been saying this. Yeah, so I already know, you know saying, you before that. We've been saying this for AEW just showed us what we already knew. Yep. And this is absolutely not the situation for me to go I told you so that is I'm not gonna do that <laughs> I might I might say something I'm at, I I'm not I am not gonna do the I told you so for AEW because I, I always knew what it was this was this was it from the start and then you know you know what I didn't you, know oh well I didn't know that uh, Fulham fans and Jaguars fans don't even fuck with Tony Khan like that. I didn't know that. Uh, what is it? Shad, been saying uh, Shad either. Yeah, but 
<clears throat> why do we kind of they weren't really fucking with Shad? I didn't know they weren't fucking with Tony. Dude. I guess Tony's more involved with full ham, but they were just yeah. like, yeah, no, he's terrible. Like, the guy's and, been a, a dickhead. Yeah, and you know, he can only like like they said on the A show, he's in a wrestling space. Yeah, he can get away with this. This is the most carny shit in the world. He can no, really get away with this. Could you imagine if Roger Goodell said some shit like that? Like if if uh, Colin Kaepernick was like, yo. I don't like the the whole the demonstration shit. And Roger Goodell was like, well, you're trash anyway, so who cares? <laughs> or some shit like that. You know how wild that would have been? Like, imagine. Imagine. Uh, uh, sorry, this is the only really sports guy I know. But, like, imagine Adam Silver was just like, you know, nah, fuck that kneeling shit. <laughs> you know, or uh, a, a, a player, you know, doesn't want to play or he, like, sits out or doesn't want to, like, you know, uh, Stand for the anthem. Well, you're trash anyway. Get fined. Yeah, or, some, or just a voice in their <laughs> opinion on the game. Imagine some crazy shit like that. Um, yeah. This would never, like, you know, we can only reiterate what's like, because, you know, we all felt this way. Yeah. Like, there, uh, what is it? I, I always felt like every performer there was, you know, token uh leo rush is a blatant like a blatant token this motherfucker yeah. tony khan was getting put to the fire and then this nigga Yo, said this, i'm talking i'm talking to leo rush right now what you mean we, we text and i was just like and then <laughs> niggas was just like we up leo back and i was just like you niggas are losing the plot <laughs> you need like y'all are not it's solid funny. y'all not it's solid funny. She was embarrassed. You know what it is? You know what it is? And I mean, Tony Khan proved it, but even, you know, that side of the fan base was just like, it's like, as soon as you mention diversity, whoa, 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 Sky, Scorpio Sky did this. Uh, Hikaru yeah. Shida was the second champion. I'm like, whoa, well, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking, people got like, are confl- I know we're going to talk about this in, in the trenches. I don't know why we're even talking about that, but like, no, I, people are trying to conflate, conflate this idea of like fucking, um, we're talking about wins and losses here. We're not talking about, I don't care if Will Hobbs is in the World Heavyweight Champion. I want Will Hobbs on TV doing something meaningful. Period. You know what I mean? That's all we want. I don't care if he wins. That <laughs> and then wrestling's fake. It doesn't matter. I don't care. And then unfortunately, fuck Hobbs. Um, yeah, that too. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it, 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 it's kind of crazy that, you know, the people that j- he just listed in the tweet, he says, Jade Cargill, dog, Jade Cargill needs help but they're too focused on just her being a black woman period like this is the token of most tokens she needs help to be a better performer but instead they're just going hey man she's sexy and black y'all see y'all niggas seeing this shit like that's not cool nigga saying dante dante martin's got wins this month and then he does not get the biggest, like, a win in the biggest career uh, and biggest match in his career. Private Party has not been on scene on TV in forever. They were on Rampage, but it was a match that nobody cared about. It was like a, a, a 10-man tag, so who cares? But that, but that was that that night. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, you know what else was kind of unfortunate about the whole thing, too? Mm-hmm. I know we, we, were, we were making jokes about the uh, Penelope Ford, Anna J. Them girls mm-hmm. went hard, and you know it got overshadowed by Tony Khan's bullshit. On and then it was uh, already a holiday to begin with. Yeah, you know it, I mean? it so. was. Uh, it was a holiday. Tony Khan did his bullshit, and then what I feel like was another extra turn was you know people talking about diversity and stuff like that. And then Tony Khan, uh, then Tay Conti was just like, "Well, AEW has always been nice to me." Yeah, a lot of that. And I and, that. and I have a heavy accent. So, do you not see your white skin? I know you're Brazilian, but do you see how pale you are? Like, and then uh, I forget uh, Darius Lockhart. I believe that's the wrestler. Um, yeah, he was the only one that stayed solid, and he was really trying to break it down for the people. And then when I looked in the comments, and people said, when people started uh, getting upset and retorting that he said uh, he used the term Latin X. And white passing yeah. uh Latino, I say, yeah, this is where this is people aren't gonna follow the plot here. <laughs> people aren't for me as an individual that lives in Miami, 
I hear it. I completely understand it. I know, I know a white passing Hispanic, Latino, whatever, when I see it. Yeah, for sure. Shout out Dan Lebitard. Um, And as far as Tony Khan being a person of color himself, this is where it gets, this is, this is where it gets deeper. I know you already lost it, but you know, this is where the plot gets a lot deeper. Careful. Classism. Classism. Oh, I, I didn't know ain't where you're going with that. You had me a little scared. That, well, I thought you about to call him a cornball, brother. Oh, As, uh... no, he is a cornball. But <laughs> let's say, like, a, a clear example would be a rich, wealthy Black person. They no longer know what the struggle is because they are, you know, they're detached from it due to their wealth. Especially Tony Khan because he born to that. You know what I mean? It wasn't even like I'm. I'm assuming Shad Khan had money when, whenever, uh, mm. Tony Khan was yeah. born. So I don't. I don't know the history of Shad Khan, but I'm just gonna assume. Yeah. So for most they, of his like, life, he's had some money. He didn't know what like what's really going that's on. That's that extra layer. So like, yes, he is not white, but he is tri- He is treated with a lot of privilege. Yeah. And. He's fucking rich. Like, he's doubled up on privilege. You yeah. have the privilege from not being black. And then you have the privilege of being fucking wealthy. Yeah. Uh, I, know, I know there's, like, you know, uh, people that go through, uh, you know, there's a lot of brown people that do go through a lot, uh, of regardless of money and such. But... He is, in this case. he is he is very detached from the issue at hand. He you know the you know the worst part I know I, the worst part about it I know he didn't read any of the excerpts I know he didn't listen to it. Oh no, he went solely off that headline, solely yeah. off the headline. He saw that headline and said, "Oh hell no." And then uh, I, I I was listening to the FIFO headline thing where they was talking about the piece as well, and then they're just like, you know, people could react to us. But click the article. Like they were, they literally hit the click the article. Yeah, at least and read it. That was oh. never, that was never gonna happen. That that's that's gonna also, happen. but that's also Fightful's fault because Fightful loves doing those misleading ass headlines. Yeah. So I mean, it's shooting yourself in the foot, but also read the, read the, read the yeah. article. And then you know, shout out to Petty Tree, uh, Asia. We're gonna give him a shout out on the actual show, but I think that's that's I, I think that's the uh, that'll be it for us from here. But um, yeah. people trying to conflate Big E's loss with um real, real life, life stuff issues, real life is shit. crazy. And then who who uh it's so who's his homeboy? Um, Andreas Hale. I know they do a lot of work together. And then he was saying stuff on the Renee Young thing, and he's talking about Big, Big e. like he's talking like Big E will never ever achieve anything they, ever again. They said they're sending Big E to the catering. You're never gonna see him again, dog. I take an L. Please do not talk about me in that manner. I'm not, I, would, I would never. Please. If you if you saw like the Carmelo Hayes interview and then you're just like, man, that shit hard. That might never happen again. What's up with you, dog? <laughs> it's like some of those ass backwards shit ever. Yeah. What are you um, doing? That's your, like, that's your boy. Why aren't you being like, motherfucker, we about to be back up. Watch, man. Big E, he about to come big, you know, guess of your homie, like, ooh, he didn't die, like, we literally saw him, saw him the next day, he's okay, he's with us, he's perfectly healthy to try to achieve more once again in the future, I don't know what's up with the, like, black wrestling community, but there is a defeatist, uh, beat down sort of mentality, well, you know, and, look, I, I, and yeah, I really don't I get know it. why. I get it because of previous stuff, but also, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's the thing is, is like I understand the the past of what happened, but a lot of the shit they'll bring up, it'd be like twenty years ago. Like, come on, we gotta let it go eventually, dog. I understand the Booker T thing was trash, and it is it still is. I'm not, I'm not trying to gate it, but it was also twenty years ago. We gotta let it go. We gotta let these things go. Well, I feel like you know. Because somebody could say, well, racism was, or like slavery was four, you know, 
400 years ago, you know, whatever. But, like, this is wrestling, dog. Yeah. It just... are, 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 are we, like, this isn't. Cyrus, what do I say all the time? Who's not allowed to lose on, on, on the internet? There's two, there's two groups, the two, the two things. Niggas know. and Liv Morgan and Oscar. Oscar, I, I was gonna say Oscar. Is it, niggas and Oscar cannot lose matches. It's not allowed. They cannot. Um, or if they it's, do, it's, it's a wrap. It's, it's, it's so it's bizarre. And gloom. Oh. It's and gloom. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It, it, it's so weird, and uh, it is what it is. At least it's hard for me to still have the whole fire about the situation when we were more or less just kind of right or like you know how we felt about AEW is more or less coming to light at this point and you know we had that conversation yesterday uh now when I go on Twitter I'm seeing a lot of people like kind of like fighting back AEW or they have like a lot of people are a lot more vocal now and I think it sucks that you know uh uh would a martyr would call be like saying big swole being a martyr for people to kind of like wake up is that like right to say I don't feel like but I feel like people are wait but I feel like people are waking up now like AEW showed their true colors yeah I think and nobody's I think, trying to like take um, it no more. This is the thing. Tony Khan wants the internet wrestling community to like him. So that he becomes so online and he wants to be a part of the IWC. The problem is, is if you do that and you piss the IWC off, you kind of lost hooked forever. <laughs> yeah, you kind of lost some credibility there. And let's keep it a stack. What what Big Spool said is, yeah, sure. There are people of color on AEW. Specifically in, for black people, Swole said it didn't feel authentic. And I'm be honest, it, it don't it, feel authentic. It really didn't. And what uh we shit, we also said it on that, you know. Uh well, I also said it to Justin literally like earlier or like later that night, even when they uh like after he recorded the A show, and I was just like, this is not like this is going to hurt Jade title win. I know yeah. a lot of us are still going to celebrate and still be like, you know, we're here. Yeah. But, you know, optics. The optics. Just yeah, how it looks. Is. Like, you know, you said this and then, you know, I feel like there was already something egregious on the show where they they literally hit the here nigga damn. And then we're going to get the here nigga damn match part two next week. Um. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's really not a good look for AEW. And I'll say uh, what I didn't say yesterday is that before I wasn't watch or like I didn't want to watch AEW, it was legitimately because I didn't think like the shows were going to be like any good. Like it was really just going to be multi-mans and there weren't going to really try because like it was like the holiday, you know? So every match was either going to be, hey, that was better than I expected because the bar was going to be in hell or the match was actually going to, like, the matches were just going to be, you know, it's mediocre by my standards. Um, now that we're back into this new year and after this tweet came out, like, this is not even me being, you know, sort of funny. Like, I, genu- I genuinely do, do not feel welcome. Um, I mean, we've been saying that forever. It feels like yeah, this is but like, for us. Yeah, but, but, but now they kind of, like, they're just, like, that tweet, you know, or just like how people are reacting to it or like saying it, it's more of just like, yes, nigga, leave. <laughs> yeah. So it's very, uh, it's very interesting the different sides of how people are see- taking that small thing. Some people are like, oh, she just upset because she got released. And then other people mm-hmm. are like, nah, you're not seeing the bigger picture. I, that's the problem, the bigger problem, I think. The, the meta problem of all this is that. I don't think people are seeing the bigger picture of what Swole was trying to say. Yes. It is not, it's not a wrestling issue. This is a societal, systemic issue. Mm-hmm. And, and I think people the, are looking past that. The real world does not work to, you know, the, the rules of the real world does not apply to wrestling fans. It really doesn't. These motherfuckers was trying to fight copyright laws earlier today. <laughs> These niggas are not smart. <laughs> 
but um another reason why like you know this is it is an issue and it it's absolutely right and people should try to listen or understand but it is getting muddled because we have people like take on t uh ruby riot white people speaking on this and then uh they're being like you know either nah she's upset because she got released well big swell was ass anyway or um well tony khan has always been nice to me yeah what's in about you who asked i didn't ask for that i didn't ask for your opinion i'm i'm literally saying i saw a tweet uh you know ruby uh ruby soho said something and then somebody was just like but who asked you and i was just like yeah that that's definitely the reaction we should be having to this who the fuck asked you or or, or more or less why are we asking you yeah, it's it's, it's silly. Um, it's 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 it's, 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 it's not even it's not even it's in res, it's in response to what Swole said. It's not in, in response to backing up Tony or whatever. It's like, yeah. hey, Swole, you're wrong. We're not really saying you're wrong, but they're trying to invalidate Swole's experience there. Yeah, you know, I mean, they can't speak for her or how she felt or how she felt about diversity within the country. I mean, I'm sorry, in the company. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like. Yeah, we just, I don't know. I it, look, I don't care about anybody's response except for Tony Khan's, and he hadn't said anything yet. So, yeah, um, okay, yeah, that, that's more. Uh, and I guess we can uh go into the show now, so let's talk about uh AEW on TBS. You're gonna climb, no, jaded, god, avalanche, jaded. This match and first ever TBS champion Jay Cargill. Well, you did it, young lady. History has been made here on TBS. That's right, Tony. New network, new champion here tonight, Jay Cargill. So we start the show with uh, Hangman Page and Danielson. Uh, in, in their uh their title rematch with judges and i think we hit uh two out of three i don't think any of us uh guessed jerry lynn i didn't know jerry lynn worked for the company <laughs> oh you know i knew that? i knew I, uh, I knew that for a minute uh i saw an roh show and then i heard he got signed and i was like that's cool hopefully you know we see his influence oh boy you sure not seeing that shit but, um, I don't even know what his position is. I don't even know that's so. how. Collect the bag. <laughs> that's the I'll position. Tell you big, I'll tell you big dog. Yeah. Um. So how would you feel about this match? Well, I'm gonna tell you, I already liked it. Look, it was 30, <laughs> I liked it, it was, last it was, week, so I like no, it. Now. <laughs> this, I, so like this, I like I like the fact that it wasn't a rehash of the of the match last time. They definitely switch it mm-hmm. up. This one felt more violent. This one felt more like a fight compared to the previous match. And what's most important is that it was like 30 minutes, which is perfect timing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. It was perfect for a a world championship match between Brian Danielson and Kenny Omega. I'm not, excuse me, Hangman Page. I'm losing it today. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place today. Hey, man, they're both white, so I can understand. But (laughs) um, (laughs) how I feel about it is, this is just like their last match cut down featuring blood and it being cut down a plus Pretty much so. featuring blood i don't know his verse was kind of weak i uh, uh <laughs> it was kind of whatever um so yeah that, that's kind of just how i feel about it like i don't uh i i definitely thought it was a good match but it still had it still had the issues that I had with the first match, but it was cut down. So like it didn't really happen periodically. And my only issues, uh, just to reiterate, like my only issues with that last match was there's a lot of, hey, are they gonna get it done within the time limit? And then whenever offense is done, it's oh man, I don't know if I could do this, dog. Like, you know, they're always exhausted after something. 
And yeah. uh, what and it, you know we see it again, which is like something I had a problem in the first match. It was just like Hangman Page is bloody, and he decides to go for the buckshot lariat, but Brian Danielson, you know, blood loss, so he like goes down, and then Hangman Page is just like. Ooh, wee man, I don't know if I could follow up. And it was just like, maybe you should just not do the whole ass backflip if you're so fucking tired. Um, the momentum, man. Shit, I think hitting the ropes would be a lot more. <laughs> but um, to me, you know, the smart thing would be, oh shit, he has blood loss or, you know, he collapsed. Maybe this would be a good time to pin him instead of just staring into the crowd being like, Ooh, we hope he gets up soon. The, yeah, was there was like a couple kinda, times that was where like they were just standing around. That's my only issue with the match. And, like, I just don't do that. Like, literally wrestling 101, like, to me, just stay on top of him. If, yeah. if we're fighting and you collapse, I'm not going to be like, oh, man, sure, which quad gets up soon so I can beat his ass again. It's a fight. I'm going to go kick your ass while you're down. Or at least yeah. pin you. This match felt very much like a a, a New Japan big match. Oh yeah. Or like <laughs> or like the, that what that's what it felt like to me. Um, Which can be you know hit or miss. This this time it hit yeah. because Brian Dales and and yeah didn't like, miss. <laughs> like literally, if this was like anybody else, like if the, if it was Daniel Garcia in there and not Brian Daniels, then I'd probably be like. Yeah, dog. Oh no, man. <laughs> I don't want to see it. Uh, we definitely have a bias, so um, that's okay. Wrestling subjective, so it is what it is. But that's uh, kind of just how I feel about it. So um, it's good. Just ne- still needs a lot more polish. Uh, I like the match a lot. I gave it a four point five. So I'd be giving it a four. Mm. Uh, right. Shit, I'd probably give it the extra. Uh, the 2.5 just because it was shorter. <laughs> I, I was I was gonna go to 4.25, but I was like, you know what? I liked it just as much as the last one. So I gave the last one a 4.5. So I was like, I gotta be fair and give this one a 4.5. Mm-hmm. Uh I don't even remember what I rated the last one, but I would definitely rate this one higher. Just like a, that one uh one quarter more. But uh moving on, we get MJF in action, and then we get Sean Dean. Uh, who revealed himself uh, this weekend of helping all the uh, black talent get on AEW and help them get squashed. So that's nice of him. And then he gets squashed himself by the fucking... He didn't get squashed at all. Oh, yeah. Well, (laughs) even... (laughs) I don't even know what to call it. This this man literally said, yeah, man, I'm the one that's kind of like, you know, doing the diversity thing and representation thing AEW, dog. Y'all should fuck with me. Or like, you know, it's pretty cool over here, man. And then uh, CM Punk slides into the ring. MJF runs off. And then I guess uh, Sean, I had this shit at mute at some point because I really didn't want to watch this shit. Um, He was just like, hey, man, come on, bro. I was almost going to represent my people, bro. What was you doing? And then CM Punk was just like, nigga, please. And then hit him with a, uh, a go to sleep, and then he won by disqualification. Won by disqualification, so he got a W. What's a loss on MJF's record? Every black man got a win this month, even Sean Dean. <laughs> Yo, what if what if Tony Khan said, "See, guys, look, even, even Sean Dean won a match." Shit, that that's what. <laughs> dog, I heard it loud and clear. I can I can read between the ropes, bro. <laughs> um. Whatever, and then they had a promo battle, and uh, it's not. This is not. Uh, um, no. It's better than the last one. The bar is in hell. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Uh, nah. I'm gonna be honest. None, okay, none so of this like... shit was hitting, bro. I'm going to be honest, right? So, like, how much longer can we do this back and forth promo thing between MDF and CM Punk? I I get it. They're both, you know, good on the mic. We get it. Like, we understand. Let's let's get this ball ball rolling. They've been doing promo battles for the last month. I don't care anymore. Are these dudes going to fight? It's giving Darby Allen, Sting versus Team Taz, where, like, they had to have a segment every week. Um, Yeah. 
but like this time these two dudes refuse to get physical in any capacity so it's just who can get the the edgiest wick quick first yeah yeah it's, it, 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 you know it's I, I don't know it's just like you know it's funny too i made i made the joke on twitter i can't believe aew was the first promotion to do a dq finish over at wwe so you know i, I looked at the raw results not one dq on raw last night on a Monday night, but somehow like, AEW did one first. I think this is the first DQ finish AEW's done, if I'm not mistaken. Like by by interference, I don't think they've ever had one like that before. This might be the first time, which is a credit to them. Yeah, and then they they decide to do it to the worst man at the worst time with with eyes on you. <laughs> um, but not nah, the uh, the whole segment between those two. Uh, garbage, throw it away. Didn't really care for it. Um, TBS title match. Oh, very puzzled why this wasn't the main event, but it is what it is. Um, oh, did you see the match? Well, we have hindsight. <laughs> but I always knew this match was not going to be good. But, you know, this is the debut on TBS. So I thought, you know, they would want to debut, you know, the title on the main event. Uh, the belt looks good. You see the belt? That shit hard. I, don't, I like the. I don't like the TBS logo, bro. I don't. Uh, I, it's like it's it looks, off putting. It's off it center. Looks, I don't know. It's weird. It's not the best logo, but I still think the belt. Looks good. Yeah, the belt looks good. Just the logo is so ugly on top of that yeah. belt that it kind of defeats the purpose. The TNT logo looks like symmetrical, nice. TBS logo. Oh, is weird. I, uh, man, I hate the TBS belt, dog. I I really the hate TV, when it was red. TV? Yeah, when it was red, it was trash. The TNT, the TNT championship, nice. I think I like it. I think when it, it was grew, black, it grew on me. When it was black, when it was black, it was at its best. Um, it black now? No, it was black for uh, Brody. And then uh, no, they changed for, it. Uh, purple for Brody. Wasn't it, it? Was, it was purple? I thought it was black. Yeah, it was purple. Okay. Um, I liked it then, and then they switched it up with white, and I thought uh, the white was okay. But uh, I like the TNT. Uh, I mean, I like the TBS belt. It looks cool. Um. It looks more of a real belt than the goddamn women's title. Uh, the women's title still looks like a children's toy. So, it is what it is. Uh, the match, I think the less said, uh, the better. But if you want to talk about it, go off. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I don't want to do this. I don't. I don't want to shit on Jade Car- Cargill. I don't. Don't don't She's don't still, be be uh, don't, constructive with the criticism. No, I am. I'm not gonna just shit on her, but like. She looked a little, a little, uh, a step behind for a lot of the match, and I was just like, uh, "I don't know, man." I got, I saw why this wasn't the main event, and it probably should have been a lot shorter than what it was because Jay kind of got exposed out there, not being so ready I, for this kind of position compared to like what we were talking about, Broad Breaker. How I was so concerned about Broad Breaker, like, is he ready? Is he ready? He looked somewhat competent out there on Tuesday night. Jay looks like she's still trying to figure out what's going on. And it's it's unfortunate. And it's just like, man. Um, but you know what? Actually, I will I'll, I'll give her credit because at the finish, when she went to go do that, her little like uh the glam slam, that uh, she she thought about going to the top, but she was like, nah. Oh I don't know if you saw I, I don't know if you saw Ruby Ruby's face. <laughs> Ruby was had a look of concern. I don't think that was yeah, selling. She uh, had a very concerned look on yes, her face. Like the um, girl better not go to the top rope. Jade stepping down, very like, smart. God. Still like, whiffing God. the finisher, <laughs> amazing. Uh, what is it? Um, liver leave. Uh, what it was just like Jade having absolutely just shitting it up out there. Yes, Queen, let's go. Um, that's kind of how I feel. <laughs> it would be like, hey, man. I prefer I I prefer it on her, uh, even though I how I feel about Jay Cargo. I definitely think that you know she can get better. I think she will get better, and then it when will. she does, it will be very interesting. And then we'll finally have a like a really good competitor in the women's division. Um, if they were gonna give it to Ruby Soha, I'd be like, what the fuck are we about to do with this shit? Um, yeah. Uh, is uh, just uh, how you were talking about Braun Breaker, just like you know, the analogy where I was just like, you can see the gears turning, 
and how like now Von Wagner, uh, Breaker, how they're very fluted with it. Jed, I'm seeing the gears turning and I'm seeing the gears stuttering. I'm going to um, keep it like this. Um, there was a match on 205 Live that people gave a lot of shit to for a wrestler who was having their second match. It's very, I can very much compare that match. I can, I can compare that match to uh, what we saw tonight, this performance. Um, and she's been doing it for almost a year now. And it's a little concerning. It's just a little concerning. I, I want faith. I want, I want Jade to do well. I like Jade Cargill. I, I think she's, she looks awesome. She seems like a good person. I want her to do well. I'm just concerned, man. And this not, I don't even think this is an indictment on uh, Jade. It's, I think it's just the training. I don't know what they're yes. doing. I, I am like going to say what I have to say about Jade Cargill, no matter what. Y'all can, like, clip it and be like, oh, he's talking. But, like, you can also clip where I say she has a lot of potential. I'm ready to see it. I'm rooted for her fucking regardless over all any other AEW wrestler. So I'm not going to fake the funk around Jay. She needs assistance. She needs help. And I don't like when Jade is going on Twitter being like, I'm green, but <laughs> whatever. And then do a 360 completely turn around and be like, how come y'all keep comparing me to, uh, 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 to Bianca? I'm not her, man. I don't got the training she got. Get it, nigga. Uh, I don't like. Well, I, 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 I really, I, re, I really don't care that you know, like, oh, she's in character on Twitter, but like, no, I miss me with that shit. It, it's like it's very hard to like you know do the very cocky thing. And then do the very, you know, oh, come on, guys, please, come on, man. Like, in the same, like, breath. So, like, it's terrible, bro. And then Tony Khan being like, shit, performance center. That's a cheat code. What? I do. We, 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 uh, what is it? We talked about it, like, two months ago when you said that shit. Like, what? Having a facility where your wrestlers get better is a cheat code? Or, like, you know, that's something that, like, scoff at? That's fucking nuts. Because people like Jay Cargill absolutely needs it. And then she will become like what, you know, AEW is currently envisioning in her. They see a finished product. They see a finished product in Jay. That's very worrying. Yeah, they're willing to give her the belt. And 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 they've seen this for the last year. And thought this is a, 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 a performer worthy of holding the belt. Um, I, I remember. Concerned. I remember. But they also episode. put them. Oh, go ahead. Oh, but, no, no, no. Go ahead. Before no, I, good. Uh, but they also put themselves in this position because they made her undefeated for so long that they had to get to a point uh, where, like, hey, we, we kind of have to give. Her, we we got to give you a championship match of some sort. Like, we can't keep hiding you from championship match. We have to do this, and you can't really lose because mm-hmm. we got a streak going for you. So, like, they kind of put themselves in a position where they had no choice but to get this belt to Jade. And 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 that's and, what your wins and losses do to you. <laughs> yeah. Um. I remember way, way back, me and Marjani were talking about the sink or swim thing. Give somebody the title and then, like, you know, see how it goes. And at the time, I was talking about private party. I said, yo, they might not be the Bucks. They might not be Lucha Brothers. But let them grow with those belts. And then that, and you know what they do? They say fuck them, and then they do that with goddamn Jurassic Express later on tonight. But um, yeah. Jade is not one of those people that I would say l- give them the title, and then you know just see where it goes. You want to protect her? I don't want to get absolutely, out there. I- absolutely want to protect her. I'm very curious what is going to come from this reign. Because it seems like Mercedes Martinez isn't really her heater, uh, which is confusing to me. Uh, so I'm very curious what Jade is going to be doing in the future. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Um, main event time, Lucha Bros versus Direct Express. I don't know why this match is happening. 
uh, nor I don't care. I don't care about either team right now. Um, how'd you feel about the match? I thought it was whatever. Uh, the match was, it was fine. It was a tag team. It was a Lucha Bros match. Some fun spot. They also do the thing that I don't like where people stand around waiting for a spot. I, I hate yeah. it. And Phoenix is the Phoenix. I love as much as I love Phoenix. He did one of the biggest offenders of that. Him and Pentagon are they do that often? They drive me mm-hmm. nuts. They're like deer in headlights if they're not doing a spot. Yeah, it's it's so I, weird because they've been wrestling for long enough to know have some kind of psychology. They just don't. It, it, and yeah, I'm, they not just don't. Blaming, like, I'm not blaming AEW. That's just them and any promotion yeah. they're in. They're just like we're doing moves. Fuck all that other shit. Move, move, move. There, there was literally a period of time where I was just like, dog, Phoenix is amazing. Phoenix is undeniable. Like, why does not like why doesn't he have some sort of goal? I said he I said he should have been AEW champion like a year ago. Like a year ago, yeah. I was like, yo, he should be AEW champion. He's that guy. But I right, was I wilding. <laughs> yeah. Uh let, let, let's uh I would like to retract that statement. Boy, I was wilding. Um this man is uh, a danger to himself and the people around him. And this is where a PC would help for these motherfuckers to practice. And, you know. They don't need that. because This isn't like Jade Cargo. These guys been wrestling for like, well, like you know, a decade. Keep the, keep the sword sharp. You feel me? Um, just... And then obviously you already know I'm going to talk about you know, Luchasaurus choke slamming Phoenix and then Phoenix arm doing the you see that in real time. Uh, oh, yeah, I definitely saw it. And I then, said, um, Oh, I said, Oh, I screamed because when I saw this, because when I saw the table coming out, I was just like, Huh, I wonder how I wonder how Phoenix is going with this. That was my that was literally my first thought. I was like, Over mm. under on Phoenix, fucking, uh, fucking this up. I don't even blame that on Phoenix. I think yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna ba- blame like, it on. I'm not gonna blame it on Phoenix, but that was literally my first thought. I was just like, "Oh, how are they gonna <laughs> fuck up the spot?" Yeah, because um, because the way like Luchasaurus chokes them, he like drove him down. It wasn't even like he like you know when you do a choke slam, you kind of like put, like just let them drop. Mm-hmm. Luchasaurus just like literally like brought his whole arm down, like forced Ray Phoenix down through the table. I don't know if he got too mm-hmm. excited or what, but like, hey, t- yeah. <laughs> All, he was really all feeling saw, it. <laughs> all I saw was Ray Phoenix's arm it hit, it in hit the opposite the, it, direction. It hit, it hit that I Family think, Guy joint, and then Phoenix said, was pointing at it. I said, I said oh! I said, yeah, that boy's done. Uh, that's a wrap. Also, for uh, uh, spoilers for Rampage, if anybody cares, it seems like Jake Atlas got hurt, um, and this match gets out <laughs> of cool. So I don't, don't laugh. We don't know what it is. What are you laughing for? They just signed the nigga. <laughs> Don't laugh. That's not funny. Jesus is, Christ, bro. If I can piece that real quick. Jake Atlas <laughs> Performance update. Center, a bad idea. Like, come he, on, he, blew, he blew out his knee. Um, that's all we got. I don't know if it was non-contact or what. So I'm sure you'll know more by the time this episode comes out. But yeah, breaking news, Jake Atlas uh, hurt himself. So there's that. Rough night. Um, so as our main event is wrapping up, uh, I thought, yo, they have to put it on uh, Jurassic Express here. Yeah, I think they were going to anyway, but I, th- okay. I felt like, yeah, they kind of like, I, 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 I was just like, dog, you, you, put, you keep it on these two? Talk. No, they Stupid- would have called the audible. You got to call the audible. Stupidity. If they would have kept that, it on uh, on breath. That, that's not one of those, like, hey, he might be hurt thing. That was, oh, no, this dude's hurt. We got to yes. wrap this match up right now. Wrap it up. <laughs> and they sure did. Uh, they got right to the finish. I'm mm-hmm. sure the finish was coming anyway, but they got right to the finish. Yeah. Uh, and I think, congrats uh, to Jurassic I think Express. I'm, yes, congratulations to Jurassic Express. I'm very glad that they're finally pulling the trigger on Jungle Boy and uh, Lugisaurus, and he can finally, like, get some reps in. Uh, did you see his family? Yeah. All their hair is fucking amazing. Holy shit. Beautiful hair. Everybody has beautiful hair in that family. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. But, what a beautiful um, family. So that's all great. Fantastic. I'm very excited for that. Lucha Bros, I don't care where they go. I really don't. Also, did you notice the um the arena going black during the match? I wonder what that was about. Motherfucker. You think it's, you think it's, that, that time? That, that was the building manager going, hey, man. Wrap it up. 
wrap that shit up. Y'all going over time. I ain't paid for this. Um, you think you think it's a uh, is it Wyndham Rotunda time? Are we here? He's gonna date. He's gonna. Uh, he wouldn't. Here? He shouldn't. He shouldn't have done that during. Uh, what is it? Tag team shit. Who the fuck he, he about it, to pull up with? It's it just a little tease. You know, like when Tad's first debuted in WWE, they did a little thirteen thing popping up random matches. A little tease. I yo, I don't care about Rotunda. So, or Wyndham, whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, don't care. Uh, quick hits. I put Spears and Wardlow here because I actually don't know who they face, but Wardlow had another squash match. Uh, please do something with this guy. This is boring, and he's going to have a match against CM Punk next week. So, yeah. yeah. I think the, 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 uh, the storyline is that, like, Sean Spears is taking, like, the spotlight from Wardlow, and Wardlow just, like, kind of going with it for now. It's whatever it is. It's a very slow burn. Another really, like, it's been, like, months they've been doing this. I'm over it. I don't care. Um, he wrestled Antonio Zambroni. For anybody okay. who cares. All right. Um, this story? Fuck. Um, moving on, we get uh, Malachi Black versus Brian Pillman Jr. In a match I did not watch. Absolutely not. You are yes, wasting yeah. my time and you're wasting Malachi Black's. Also, I, I did see on Twitter that Julia Hart had a eye patch and I thought that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Julia Hart. I thought uh, uh, um, yeah, my fault. Yeah, this match was nothing to write about. It was it was a match that happened on TV. So mm-hmm. there's that. That's all I really got. Nothing uh, Malachi won the black won the match like he should have. And it's kind of all I got for this. There's no nothing really else. I don't remember anything else happening in this match. That's a, that's a enough. Don't try to milk it. <laughs> that is is as boring as it gets. Um, and then Jericho came out and he got jumped by 2.0. And then the inner circle came out. Uh... <laughs> well, Pride of Powerful and Eddie Kingston. It wasn't even inner circle because Sammy nor Hager. I'm not even sure Hager still has a job. You cannot get me to care about these motherfuckers, man. Oh, also, I just uh, wanted to uh, go back into the main event. Jurassic Express won, and then every tag team felt the need to, like, do a little pose at the top of the ramp. And then yeah, check it out the were, car, man. And then they were panning to single stars for some reason. Just Malachi Black was just watching. Jericho yeah, was Kingston, just watching. Eddie Kingston uh, was there. Uh, no, nah, I think that was... Uh, that was Eddie Santana. Kingston. That was Santana. Yeah, it was just one of them. That's uh, why. That's why I was. Like, you sure that was Eddie Kingston? I don't know that was Eddie Kingston. No, nah, it really oh. dog. It was one of the dudes from Pride and Powerful because I I literally thought, um, why aren't you guys down there with the rest of the tag teams? <laughs> mm. Um. Hey man, AW um start a new new year on a uh mid note. So, hey, to wrap up AEW, the the first match, the uh, Brian versus Hangman, great match. Everything else, eh? Is, if you want to watch it, I guess it would need nothing of a lot of importance really happened tonight besides the title match, obviously, and Jade winning the championship. But the actual match, the actual in work in ring quality tonight was not hitting for me. Um, yeah, man, just a very Okay, show just an okay episode of AEW. I'm not gonna shit on it and say it was bad. It was just okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we gonna see. Do, do you want do you, quick do you, quick battle uh, of the belts predictions real quick? Or you wanna... Oh shit! Is battle the, when's battle of the belt? Saturday. Oh, for real? Yep. This was a go home show. Not really, because because uh, I don't really consider this like a big show. It's oh, like kind of like, like Jesus Christ. Like a, <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna that, say yeah. like a pay per view. All right, um, Riho versus Britt Baker for the AEW Women's Championship. Britt Baker. Uh, yeah, Britt, I got Britt on this one. She uh, Riho has beaten her like three times already, so I think Britt's going to get her win. Um, and the other match is Cody Rhodes defending his championship in the rematch against Sammy Guevara. Don't care either, Cody. Cody, I think but I think going to win in a, uh, a heelish way. I think I we're, I, it's time for us to progress. I don't, I don't 
think I'm gonna watch this. I'm gonna and be real cheap. <laughs> it's the only it's the only two matches. It's an hour long special, so it's only two matches. And yeah, that's pretty much it. TNT Saturday night. If you have any, if you're not doing anything Saturday night, want to watch it together? Wait, it's on TNT. Yeah, it's on TNT. Um, we could do a live watch. I'll let you know I might have plans, but if I don't have plans, yeah, I, w- I was literally gonna say that. <laughs> I was just like, hey man, we could do a live watch, but uh, or like a, a spaces or something. Uh, uh, would you prefer to do a spaces instead? Yeah, we could probably do spaces. Okay, um, we're gonna do a spaces and get in and get out, I guess. Battle bells, y'all want to come hang? Actually, I wish I did. I'm gonna cut that out. I don't want to do a space. I don't want. I don't really watch this. <laughs> don't watch it, bro. You don't have to watch. It. I'll watch it. Don't worry about no, it. I don't. I. I don't want to watch this. I really don't. Uh, those first two matches are something I could really like. Ah, shit. I'm gonna find something to do with my Saturday night. <laughs> um. So yeah, let's uh, let's get out of here, and then we're gonna talk about NXT uh 2.0. Oh, uh, New Year's Evil. The good shit. Breaker just able to hold on to that turn buckle. Breaker sent it. Bulldog nailed it. Breaker with the bulldog. The challenger to his feet. Blood is in the water here at New Year's Evil. Breaker sensing this could be his moment. Locking in the champion. Reclining back a champa. NXT title on the line. Struggling to get out in the worst. Oh, Chamber has to tap. Breaker is the champion. He was the winner by submission and the new NXT champion, Braun Breaker. All right. NXT 2.0, New Year's Evil. We here for the new year, and uh, we are off to a great start. Uh, was day one and this sort of like back to back? I think we we're in a really good start for 2022. Even Raw was all right. I mean, it wasn't the best episode of Raw, but it was it was it was decent. No, I don't watch Raw, so so, <laughs> well, so far no misses. Best, <laughs> so far, so good this week. Yeah, but. Uh, Overall thoughts on New Year's Evil before we do the match, uh, you know, match by match breakdown. Um, you know what? I shit on the NXT crowd a lot. I think they did a great job tonight. They were enthusiastic. They weren't, you know, chitting for themselves. Mm-hmm. They were, seemed like they were they were really into the the workers specifically. And, uh... Surprisingly, the two point guys. A lot of the two point guys. They were getting like Corey was getting um, heavy cheers. Braun was getting the the, the barks. Um, yeah, uh, man, it was just a fun show, especially once AJ. I think once AJ came out, like the first match was really good, the crowd was into it. But I don't know, like after AJ came out, the energy changed for the rest of the night. Oh, I feel like yeah. it was just like okay, <laughs> um, it's a real I, show. I I think it was like either uh because that and the riddle thing were like sort of back to back, but that's definitely what uh brought the energy into the room, and I thought that was great. Hey man, whatever uh whoever thought of having that Facebook group be like, hey, you want to be in the crowd? That shit working wonders, boy. Getting yeah, all the shitheads out of here. Uh, but let's get into this first match, which I thought was really, really good. Um, Carmelo Hayes versus Roderick Strong. Uh, this match had no way in missing <laughs> by any. Yeah, that was, this, you is know, the, this is guaranteed. You this was a guaranteed speed. banger to start. <laughs> um, I loved that. I thought it was great. Uh, Roderick Strong really came in there. Um. Did his thing against Carmelo Hayes. I didn't really think uh, he had to do much heavy lifting. Like, I don't think uh, Melo is really one of those 2.0 guys that, like, you know, needs extra help in the ring. Like, I think he, his he's gear. He's already. Yeah, he's already yeah, he's established he, he, already. Yeah, he is smooth in the ring already. Um, and to me, I really feel like when he did the kip up fake out to the kick joint, I was just like, yeah, this man is definitely sliding into like a Gargano type role. Like he is the worker, like, man. Yeah, he's definitely one of the best workers that are coming out of um 2.0 right now. And then Roger Strong really just as fluid as ever and really giving uh Carmelo Hayes a lot. 
Um, yeah, they had great. Have, they had great chemistry. Yeah, I have literally no qualms with this match. Uh, result and all, I thought this was like fantastic. No interference um, from Diamond Mine people or no, uh, no. I I didn't see any shenanigans from Trick, so I thought that was really no, cool. They just let him work. Um, that that top rope spot at the end. I'm not sure what was supposed to happen there. If that was planned, but it it looked. I don't know. I don't, they, I don't. they went straight to the finish after that. It was weird. That was a weird. When I it's the only the only little nitpick I could pick pick out, but when I saw that, I was just like, was he supposed to land on his feet, or was that really supposed to be some like wild Xplex type shit? Because if it was supposed to be an Xplex, why the hell did Carmelo Hayes get a right after like that? It shit ain't happening. Yeah, that's what and I'm saying. He got left- right up. <laughs> I'm not sure who was supposed to sell that move, but that would probably be like, you know, like the one thing that I'm just like, oh, what the fuck? But that if, shit if was, it was if it was a If it was a bot, Vic Joseph is a is a, a commentary <laughs> legend because he called it immediately. Like, oh, he's an like, Xbox. I was like, damn. That's mm-hmm. what that was? Say, say, save that shit quick. Could have fooled me. <laughs> could have fooled me. Should've, he should have pulled the uh, the Excalibur and be uh, <sighs> just say, like, the Sp- say that shit in Spanish. <laughs> Make it up. Yeah, some bullshit on the fly, but... Uh, <laughs> I thought that match was fantastic. I really did enjoy it. Um, next match that we have up is MSK and Matt Riddle versus Imperium. And before we start this, uh, before we start talking about this match, it was confirmed earlier today that Jeff Hardy was supposed to be the shaman. So we were, right. we were like, we hit it right on the head. Yeah. <laughs> we called it like a motherfucker. And it sucks that you know what happened to Jeff happened to Jeff, but I think we got a. Uh, I think we would have got. <laughs> I think we got a better match out of it by uh, replacing with Riddle, and I think we are robbed, and the people in the CWC are robbed of not hearing the MSK no words remix. <laughs> oh, the no more words MSK remix would have went crazy in the CWC. We were robbed. Uh, come on, Jeff. What you I'll doing, ne- dog? I- I'll never forgive Matt Hardy for this. <laughs> oh, my God. I know he's behind this. <laughs> but um, we come out to the mix, which I, th- at first it blindsided me. <laughs> it didn't mess too well at the start, but uh, um. They all come out, uh, and we get this match started. And, you know, once again, no qualms with this match, man. Uh, Imperium, I know I sort of, like, find them a little bit of boring or a little bit bland. Um, even with Walter, I'm not going to lie. But MSK and Matt Riddle brought all the charisma that this match needed. Uh, also Walter as well. But um, this was fantastic stuff from uh, both parties. You imagine if it was Walter and Jeff Hardy, yeah, Walter would have caved Dog. Jeff Hardy chest in. <laughs> he would have, he would have, he would have, <laughs> hey, <laughs> do these boys hit up to like this at, uh, in Jacksonville, man? Oh, yeah. Lord. But yeah, man, that, the match was very, very fun. There was, um, there was like one sequence before the, uh, before the fat, not the, the fast break, I don't think of basketball, before the commercial break. <laughs> Uh-huh. Where they were just going crazy, I, I was like kind of into it, but all of a sudden they just hit like a, a gear out of nowhere. And it was like, oh yeah, Walter was chopping dudes, and then MSK was kicking people. I was like, yeah, what is this? out of nowhere? Um, it felt like, um, I, you know what it kind of felt like? It definitely it felt kind of like them uh, AEW multi man, but like the fun parts of the match. You know what I mean? The part where they take <laughs> it up, where it, it, it feels uh, better structured. <laughs> yeah. Um. I would say I think it was um, the second time Riddle and Walter gets tagged in is where the match just goes up and up and up and up and up. <laughs> so wait, uh, I have a question. I have, I have a question. Um, R- R- Riddle and Walter, they were like a team in, on the Indies, right? Or am I bugging? No, but they were in a team in a Survivor Series. Yeah, I know that. But I'm thinking like pre like. Oh, nah. they were like a stable um or it was uh it was the chosen game. bros him and uh jeff Cobb Please. that uh oh, jeff Cobb. That I, they were like i i think they may have been pwg champs at some point in time but they okay. uh they were a team in pwg and they're fairly uh they're fairly interesting together um oh you really know what i'm thinking stuff. you know what it was it's thatcher thatcher was in ring conf oh not yes riddle. i got a confused um, we miss you thatcher uh join diamond mine or some shit um, that'd be, that'd be cool um 
But continuing on, I yeah, I really thought this match was amazing. And then after the commercial break, motherfucker, what is it? The stocks up emoji, just like eighty mm-hmm. times, like it just <laughs> nonstop. Uh, the the pace of the match got quicker. Uh, they got no matter how fast the match was going, it was like fluid all around. And what I thought was very interesting is that Riddle got the win. Oh uh, well, he yeah. you know he got the pin. So I thought that was yeah. very interesting. Um, I mean, it's strange because he's not even going to be there. He even said he's going to be gone for a while. So interesting choice to get let him get the pin instead of having like Wesley do it over, over or something. I don't know. So I think it's fine to let Riddle get it because, you know, later on after the show, they were just like, well, you still have to earn it in the Dusty Cup anyway, which we'll talk about in, uh, yeah. later. So I think it's cool to have not have MSK win it. So while they're in the Dusty Cup, we're not just thinking, well, they already pinned them, so why are they in this tournament, you know, for, like, the next couple weeks? So, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's true. I think that's a good way to, uh, you know, I guess remove that criticism or that thought before it, like, even arises. Um, good point. Yeah, really good match, too. Yo, hit us. <laughs> where, where did Walter go from here? What do you, do you think? I don't even know, bro. Mm-hmm. I, really I mean, don't. I don't I think. Ne- gonna, honestly, I don't think I, I never know. I never know where Walter goes. Me either. He going. He going where the um the baby at. He going. <laughs> he going. Shit, that motherfucker might. Uh, what is it? <laughs> that motherfucker on a first class flight back home. Right, storm, right back uh, home storm style. Uh, <laughs> man, also, shit, uh, Walter. Walter, Walter visa. Look, Walter. Walter looks great too. Um, oh, that yeah. time off he's gotten. He's slim and tall. He, he getting ready. Uh. He but he looks static. great, man. He we let don't let this motherfucker get toned, bro. Don't toned let Walter up. get like mad muscle, son. He starts we, looking we like gotta, Sheamus. We got a problem. We got to start discussing um the NXT workout program, whatever they got going on over there, because they got people looking like man. Everybody that goes through there looks fantastic. I remember like uh, Nash Carter posted a pic of like his body progression since he signed. It, like he looked mm-hmm. like night and day. He, I wonder if AJ uh, if AJ can hop on. You know, I mean, let's do it. Let's do Ooh, NXT AJ. Man, like. we'll see, dog. Uh, <laughs> I know that NXT workout regiment is something serious because I saw, you know, I saw a clip from AEW and I saw what Adam Cole looking like now, and I was just like, yeah, he looked like a gamer that wrestles. Yeah, he, he slipped. He that slimmed shit, down a lot. That shit not. That shit not looking good, son. Um, so I know it's not. I know uh, it's not very consistent over there, but um. Yeah, Walter looks fantastic, man. He keeps he keeps that up and started looking like Vaughn Wagner. <laughs> oh, for that nigga. <laughs> it might be, it might already be. Hey, chill out. Um, but let's get into the women's match here. It was a match that we were very worried about um when we were doing our predictions. But I thought this match was surprisingly really, really good. Like all the really worries good? I had was like not uh not a fact. Well. I would say it's really good because everything I was worried about or, you know, stuff that would, you know, irks me that would happen in any other wrestling match did not happen. Yeah, I'm not saying my bar was like low, but stuff that would have brought down the match for me did not happen. If you were to give it a rating out of five, what would you say? I would give it a 3.25. Oh, you know, I was thinking about that. I went three on it. Just because it was a fine match, there's nothing like spectacular that happened, so, but there was no real problems with it. I, I, you know, the, the my main problem with the match was Raquel. Oh, yes. that's that that, 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 that like fiery comeback she tried to have. I don't know if she just moving slow or she wasn't sure. It just, I don't know. It wasn't. It should. Uh, it should have came. It came from Cora. Been. Probably, yeah. Um, but I, because... they're weird with Cora. I feel like they they're like afraid to give her too much offense. Well, she's so fucking small. <laughs> I know she's tiny. Um, and I personally, I still can't really gauge on what Cora Jade's offense is. I don't think Cora Jade knows what her offense is yet. At this point, she's still figuring, yeah, she's figuring it out so, on the go, bro. And shit, she's they're doing uh, I think a, a, a decent job of it. But yeah, Raquel sort of being like the glue in this match, like. If, like, Raquel is never not in the match. 
Yeah. And once she was at, like, you know, once she wasn't a factor, the match ended. Um, which I think is fair because, you know, the inexperience of, you know, uh, Cora J definitely played a factor into it. And I don't know how people didn't see this uh, coming for the most part, but I'm going to give it that extra, uh, you know, 25 because Mandy did it clean. No, yeah, she, no, she did uh, no, no brass knuckles, no miss. Uh, no toxic attraction. She just, you know, uh, Cora Jade likes to rely on the schoolboy, and Mandy Rose scouted it out as, you know, the quote unquote veteran she is. Did a little yep. twist and maneuver it, did some Omarion type shit, and then uh, <laughs> went for the pin. Yeah. And then, you know, Cora Jade has been relying on that schoolboy so much. So when it backfired, she was just like, oh shit, my best move just fucking, like did not work. <laughs> yeah what's her finish is it not the schoolboy? <laughs> yeah she'll get a fucking finish <laughs> Ooh. that's crazy niggas, uh, niggas asking I'm, the hard hitting I'm questions say, this year that's what I'm saying bro like, what we, like, I, we got, that's why, that's she, why she I never thought she, she gotta was find an identity. she just figured out her gimmick so I think now but you gotta figure out what, what yeah. her moveset is gonna be based off the gimmick I feel like I feel uh I feel like that's the same uh kind of the same way for uh Braun Breaker where you know he finally found his character and now you know he later found his confidence and now it's all coming together. And then, thank God he she started using the recliner. I'm so happy he decided to do that. So <laughs> yes. that weak ass power slam. That power slam gets no reaction whatsoever. When he did it in the mat, like at the end, it yeah, didn't it, feel it, like it, it didn't pop. Uh, no, it didn't pop nobody. nobody reacted. <laughs> he did not um, care about that damn move. But yeah, let's get let's get into the main event, uh, Tommaso Ciampa uh, versus Braun Breaker, and boy, Braun Breaker was showing me something. He said Cyrus is not a believer. I'm about to before wild you, out for the first like before, five minutes of this match. <laughs> before you even get there, the entrance off the rip. I saw the big old NXT sign. The oh, I said, wait a minute, what's going on? I saw mm-hmm. my man in chains. <laughs> When, when he came out to the ring, you know, barking and shit, I said, uh, what, what's that full ready, ball shit? Uh, that commercial that right? we ready. <laughs> we ready. That shit got so, me hyped. Then he kicked, really kicked, through the, with that. kicked through the sign. But yeah, um, I would say, like, I was already ready for this match. I was very excited for the match. Um, when they started doing, like, the leapfrog sequence. And then Braun Breaker went for the take, uh, went for the takedown and started rolling around like a uh, what is it, crocodile or alligator? I'm not sure. I was just like, like yeah, that's roll. the type of shit I like. That's the shit I like to see. <laughs> yeah, that's the type of shit I like to see. Um, um, a nasty spot was um, I, I forgot exactly what the, the move was, but uh, um, well, a, a, a great reversal. Braun Breaker had him like up for like a like a power slam or something like that, and somehow like mm-hmm. she up like rolled out the press. ring. Not yeah, they like rolled somehow like jumped down and rolled out the ring at like one motion, and mm-hmm. then like hit him with that Willow's bell. I said that shit would that Dog. shit was smooth. Chopper had his working boots on tonight. He I don't know where he got that power from, or Braun Breaker just knew what it was, but that shit was too seamless. <laughs> yeah, shit smooth. That was so smooth. That my probably in the course the um that table spot. That was nasty. The way the table oh, broke, man. that was such a nice visual. The way it like, broke, like it just collapsed in, in itself. But like, mm-hmm. it, like, it was like delayed for a second before it even collapsed in, which made it even like more brutal. Like when, uh, when like Chompa like bounces and then it breaks, I was like, yeah, that shit was like, eesh. I'm, I'm glad it broke. It was a really good visual with the fact that it broke. It shows that like there was a lot more impact because there's been a lot of times where <laughs> the t- I don't know what it is lately. But the tables just ain't breaking. <laughs> a- a- AEWs are worse. I don't know what kind of tables they brought, but them uh, tables is sturdy. Let you me know, tell they, you. They, they, re- they real marks. So, uh, they you know, real they tables. get the real tables. <laughs> also, yeah. um, AEW has a history of props or, you know, stuff not working. So whoever's in charge yeah. of that department, getting paid Sean too Dean. much. Sean Dean. <laughs> getting paid too much, man. Um. But no, nah, I, I I thought this match was really good and no commercial breaks, fantastic, really added to the match. And you know, uh when Breaker kicks out of the fairy tale ending, I knew what time it was. 
Yeah, when I when he a... when he kicked out of the fairy tale and then I looked at the clock and I said it was ten oh two. I said, yeah, I know it's cracking. You know what time <laughs> it is. How do you feel? Do you think it's too soon? What do you think? I would say this this match and this match made me a believer. This match yeah. complete like completely turned it around for me and makes me think that he is more or less ready. And then I like that Wade Barrett was just like, shit, man, you ain't never really ready until you have it. Yeah. And so we're just going to see uh, Braun Breaker try to make the best of it. And what's cool is we have people like AJ Styles around, which we'll talk about in a moment, people like Riddle coming down. So Tommaso Ciampa doesn't really have to be the only vet that's around. So, you know, this can, you know, uh, in the next couple of weeks or whatever, especially if they're going to really be like Dusty Classic focus, like you can really hide him behind that. So I'm not really uh, too mad at that, but we can get another match against him and Roddy. We can get the AJ Styles. We can get the Waller joint. We can get the, uh, well, if LA they get eliminated, if, if they get eliminated, we can see uh, Joe Gacy. Yeah. P, uh, you know, Pete Dunn always waiting in the wing. So uh, I think Breaker has a lot to, like there's a lot of moving pieces that you can slot with Breaker versus Ciampa. So I think this is really, really good. Because imagine Tommaso Ciampa retains here and then who's like next? Roddy? That wouldn't really, to me, that wouldn't really make much sense, but I would like it anyway. Or like um, it. Yeah. And then we have Ciampa kind of being the veteran heel here. And then you would have to flip him again because, you know, you went with Grayson Waller. I don't think Ciampa, I don't think Ciampa's really a heel, though. He kind of like, between uh, Yeah. Uh, 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 I know the archetype. That's why I'm trying to preface it with like veteran heel ish. Like he's, yeah. like he's making it clear that he is will he absolutely would take advantage of, um, breakers, inexperience or naivety, you know, and I, I feel like if he was like a veteran face, it would have been like you know, you're gonna have to really come correct or blah 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 sort of stuff like that. Uh, which I feel like he said it two weeks ago. So yeah, you're right. It, it, it's a very weird tweener sort of thing. But I'm trying to like he, he he's he's a being face, specific he's about the archetype. Yeah, he's a face, but he's like willing to do whatever it takes to get that W and keep that championship. You don't get it twisted. Yeah. Like he'll see if he needs to. You know what I mean? Or he'll, he'll do something mm-hmm. dastardly if he needs to. Um, and yeah, you know the thing with Braun mm-hmm. is just like um, at for initially I was like, hey, if they give him the championship. Like, where does he go from there? Like, he's at the top. He can only go down from there. But then I was like, you know what? Honestly, I don't think Braun Breaker is even going to be in NXT by 2023. He might get called this year. <laughs> yeah. Keep it in a stack. He should not. I feel like he should not. Him and, like, people him people like him and Carmelo Hayes should not be around post-SummerSlam. I think Carmelo Hayes might stay a little longer. They might need him. They need uh, somebody. You're right. But in the case that they don't need him. <laughs> I feel like the summer we got it like new fresh blood in the scene and especially for uh I I hear Smackdown needs trouble. I mean uh Smackdown needs help. Every, Smackdown needs everything. It's, uh, everything. With NXT they're lucky, 2. Ro- they're lucky getting... Roman seemed like he's already coming back cuz geez, they would have been mm-hmm. real sh- shit out of luck on the way to Rumble. Oh yeah. Um but no, that was uh, New Year's Evil. At least uh, all the matches uh, that were on the show. Um, we're gonna get into these quick hits, starting with uh, Chase U- Chase University. I thought this promo was very funny, very hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I was expecting uh, something shitty or shady to be said, but that's fine. Uh, he gets a full s- scholarship. And then Von Wagner comes out, and I feel like this is them trying to have like shove two segments at once. And he stunk up the joint and uh, got escorted out the building. And I was just well, like, No, he, what? Forgot, he, he started oh, fighting fans. He started, he started oh, yeah. fighting. Um, 
when the rest was just like, hey, yo, chill out, chill out, chill out, I felt like that was like a real person. <laughs> like, yo, chill, what you doing, dog? <laughs> hey, no, 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 he's not part of, he's not a play. And then he's already like off the, <laughs> off, yo, the uh, you, off the uh, bench. You know, my thought was the whole time, was like, yo, what if the whole crowd just turned on him and started jumping that nigga, bro? And just started beating him up. <laughs> if the whole Chase, uh, if the whole Chase U section just started boxing? That shit would have been hard. Nah, literally the, the whole the whole NXT universe jumped in there like, oh, shoot, you jumped. No, nah, that would have been hard. Get him back. When, uh, when Grayson Waller was playing at the nigga, uh, he said, nah, this motherfucker been watching wrestling. He a nerd. I feel like he wasn't a plant. He should have swung on no, Waller. No, that, that was a real guy. That was, that was definitely wasn't a plant. <laughs> that nigga was confused when he got on camera, bro. <laughs> he said, what you mean? Uh, what did I do? But that was very funny. And then... uh. Wagner got escorted out the building, which I don't, I didn't really care for. I was warming up food. Um, moving on after MSK gets the win. Oh, hold get, on! Before you say that, you got what? you got uh, walked out, but you also like kind of you know gestured at uh, Roderick Strong, like yo, what's up? You got beat, like you you, you know what I mean. So it might be leading <laughs> to Roderick Strong versus uh King Von uh, Von Artest. Um, <laughs> King Von, <laughs> yeah, you gonna be a dead man, I. Right. Um, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> But moving on, uh, after MSK gets the win, hit, uh, Riddle and MSK are in the NXT parking lot. And I was just like, please get out of there. <laughs> I was just like, please get out. <laughs> um, the Creed brothers run up on them and uh, kind of just lets us know that, like, you know, luckily they didn't pin uh, Imperium, so we wouldn't be upset. But they're just like, yeah, you might have won, but you still got to be in the trenches with the rest of us. You feel me? And shit done changed since y'all been gone. So uh, in two weeks, the Dusty Classic will start. I feel like they should yeah. announce this already. I think we already uh, spoke about it. But, um, it's going to be in two weeks, and then it's going to be uh, the women's side of the tournament is going to be in, uh, is going to start in February. Uh, most likely, okay. I feel like the bracket is going to be a lot smaller. But I feel like they're going to have like a lot more legitimate tag teams. This time around, yeah, you, usually they have like a whole bunch of just like put together teams. I think we have enough I, tag teams for probably each thing. Yeah, I, and I feel like even even with like uh some of the 2.0 people, I feel like we're most likely still gonna get like some fresh teams as well. Um, we might uh see Tiffany and she might get the best partner money can buy. Um, who, who's the, uh, who's that chick from Powerpuff Girls? Uh, something more bucks. <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> she just, she just be throwing money so and shit for uh superpowers. <laughs> that that's uh that's what she about to do. She about to uh. Just pay for the best indie wrestler they could possibly find, and then carry. <laughs> um, moving on, I feel like this is a waste of our time and Pete Dunn's. He'll be facing Tony D'Angelo again in a crowbar on a pole match. Turn that up. And I said, "This is what we doing." If it's on a pole, I'm in. <laughs> okay. Um, that'll be happening next week. Um, Styles, uh, AJ Styles has a segment. He's in gear, which made me think the match was actually going to happen, but it didn't because the match will be happening next week. Grayson Waller versus AJ Styles in our main event. And I love what something that we were told, uh, literally like a day before AJ Styles always felt that he should have went to NXT or had a little stint in NXT. And he comes out and lets us know that. He said, hey, yeah, I think I'll do that shit now. <laughs> and yeah, I, I I think this is the best landscape to do it in. This is the perfect time for him to come. Um, AJ, obviously, AJ Styles has been wrestling for a long time. Mm-hmm. I think it's just 98, I think. Um, is This is, no, nah, maybe not 98, like 2000. Either way, this is like, he's done everything in WWE. Mm. I think he wants to. I want. I think he wants to reduce schedule with the last couple of years of his career. I'm yeah. assuming. So he wants a, a definitely a, a lighter schedule, and I he can do that. He wants to work with. Uh, it seems like he wants to work with the young talent. He was with almost for what, damn near a year. Yeah. Uh, so a- AJ Styles, I think, is a very, uh, very giving. Yeah. And I don't. I, sure. I, and I don't mean that in any like uh, you know asshole sort of way. But he is very giving, and. Having a superstar like that uh, on NXT 2.0 is going to be something great because huge, you know, that's he, huge. He, that's what they needed. They, yeah, they need fantastic. The star power also, so bad. He, yeah, they need the star power so bad, and also like AJ, 
I say he's giving, but like he doesn't really have to give these guys much. I think just like him. Oh, he's not losing. Being a program, lose on the main roster. like being a, being in a program with them. Period is the rub. Yeah. You know? So he ain't losing. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> AJ Styles don't lose. He he's not losing clean. Okay. Um, I'm excited for this. There's a lot of matchups that uh, I would like to see AJ Styles in, but I I think he's gonna end up with a lot of 2.0 people. So. It is what it is. Uh, moving on, we have a segment here with Electra Lopez, and she said, "If you motherfuckers want me, fight for me." And I was just like, "Why is Elgato Del Fantasma fighting for you in the first place, dog? Like this shit is ridiculous." Um, but we're gonna get uh, custody of uh, <laughs> of Electra Lopez match between uh, Santos Escobar and Zaya Quinn next week, and shit. I I ain't, it hurts me to say this, but Santos, I really hope you lose, dog. We need to get back to the paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got your mind on the wrong thing right now. We need to, we, we need are to get losing back on the, the plot. <laughs> <laughs> we we gotta get back on our mission, guys. Let's yeah, tighten up. Uh, gold, um, <laughs> dubs. You know, at, you know, lose on purpose, but you know, dubs after. Um, we need to move on from this. I think all parties will benefit from moving on from this. Um, and then Grimes coming back. And finally, I've been saying this for at least three weeks, now, uh, three months now. He got gold on his mind. Let's fucking go. He, he heard you. He heard what you said. He said, you know what? Cyrus is right. It's time to tighten up. We got we, we to gotta go for the gold, baby. Champion. Hey, Amen. A wrestler could be like, I'm in this for the money. Motherfucker, the money is basically guaranteed, okay? You're not fooling me. <laughs> it's yeah, time to get first. in these record books, dog. <laughs> I also like the catchphrase, 2022 the moon. I said, that's it. I, you, you feel like that's what they was waiting for? They were just like, yeah, we can throw you in the program in, uh, during or, you know, the war game season, but would it 2022 the moon slap? Wait it That's out. Fire. <laughs> Put that on a t-shirt. Put that on a t-shirt right now. Hey man, uh, if he wins it, shit. Go ahead. Um, and that is it for NXT. I think this is a good episode to really start the year. Uh, I think New Year's yeah, Evil them. is a very good pay-per-view because it always starts off the year, right? Um, so yeah, that's it. You can Subscribe to us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash The A Show RNC. Um, you get episodes of The A Show, The War Report, Rewriter's Room uh, early. And then we have other miscellaneous wrestling content uh, like Legendary Runs, where we cover for the uh, Legendary Runs. Uh, and our first season, we covered Kenny Omega's G1 run, uh, the first one. Batista coming soon. Uh, you can get Evasion Diaries uh, that talks about the evasion angle of 2001. You are not a wrestling, what is it, uh, <laughs> content creator if you do not cover the, <laughs> the evasion angle. Um, Patreon exclusive shows like uh, Spot Callers, where we cover everything in wrestling now. Uh, 2022, we'll be covering miscellaneous wrestling shows. Uh, movies documentaries all sorts of stuff uh the latest episode we have out is beyond the mat uh which is a documentary kind of just i think this is like a uh, dark side of the ring before dark side of the ring uh and it's my first time watching it so it was very interesting me and justin uh yeah so five dollars get you in the door you can follow kwan at twitter at uh the comeback spot you can follow me cyrus on twitter at Cy Cyrus on TWR, and then you can follow us at the A Show RNC, and just keep up with everything we're doing on the network. Is there anything that you would like to say, Juan, before we uh, sign off and go into the Patreon topic? Love you guys. I was on mute that whole time, but you didn't even say nothing. I was over That's fine. You didn't need to say anything. I was saying all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I wanted to chime in. Okay. Um. We're going to be talking about uh, WWE Day 1. Uh, you know, one of the rare times I watch uh, <laughs> anything main roster uh, base is always when it's a pay-per-view. So 
We're gonna talk I about that. Probably, probably... I saw you tweeting about like, oh Cyrus is actually watching this. Okay. Yeah, I always, I always watch pay per views. I just don't watch the weekly shows because I rather do other shit during those times. Um. So we're gonna be talking about day one. If you want to hear our conversation about it, uh, tap in.